everyone, this is People in Power and I'm Summer El Shahat. On today's programme, a seismic election. It's been 10 months since a magnitude 7 earthquake devastated the tiny Caribbean nation of Haiti, killing at least 230,000 people, injuring 300,000 and leaving more than a million homeless. The disaster could have hardly happened in a worse place. Haiti was already one of the world's poorest countries, following decades of political upheaval and corruption that had all but destroyed its economy. As people and powers Juliana Rufus discovered in the days following the quake, rebuilding this shattered nation was always going to prove an immense task for its people and its leaders. Well, later this month, the country goes to the polls to elect a new president to deal with those challenges this being only the third democratic election in its history. Juliana has been back to see if any of the candidates have answers to the problems still facing ordinary Haitians, not least a growing threat of cholera and the fact that most still have nowhere to go. It's been 10 months since the earthquake in Haiti killed over 230,000 people making it the worst natural disaster in the history of the Western Hemisphere. 1.3 million Haitians are still living in tent camps like this one in the capital, Port-au-Prince, and they've had enough. With elections scheduled for the 28th of November, it is this kind of anger and frustration that political candidates are going to have to deal with. In these elections, Haitians actually have the choice between no less than 19 different presidential candidates and their posters are absolutely everywhere. And it's a unique race in Haiti's history in that for the first time, the result is truly unpredictable. Haiti's political history has been one of revolt, dictatorship and violence. In fact, the current president, René Préval, is only the second in 200 years to see out his full term of office. Democracy arrived in the country in 1990 with the election of the priest Jean-Bertrand Aristide. But over the following decades, two US-backed coups against him resulted in cycles of political violence, leaving Haitians disillusioned with what elections can achieve when Haiti's seat of power, the National Palace, had its back broken by the earthquake, for many it felt like natural justice. Everyone was what in the government, you know, they don't do shit. why now they went for president. Why is supposed to vote? I'm not voting for nobody. Confiance lives in an earthquake camp just across the road from the palace. We have 2,800 people in this park, and we are little girls, nine, eight years old, being raped, you know, almost every day, you know. But the government, they know about that. They don't do shit. you know, they care about money. That's why we call the palace the devil's house. Those girls over there, they sell their bodies at night, make some money. How much does it cost? Just uh, 100 good, 200 good. That, so that's basically where they're yeah, having this sex? Space in this space, yeah. No bird, you know. People like this still have to find a politician who really speaks for them. While organizations like the UN claim that the growing array of candidates signals more choice for the electorate, Patrick Eli former defense minister for President Aristide, believes the choices have actually narrowed. There are so many so-called candidates belonging to the same political movement. So you wonder why are they splitting the vote? Is it simply based on personal ambition? People come to me and say, who should I vote for? And I say, uh, you know, I don't know. The fact that there are no clear favorites in this race has left it open to wild cards like Michel Martelly, also known as Sweet Mickey. For over 20 years, he's been one of Haiti's favorite musicians, both outrageous and outspoken. People are claiming that I was crazy on stage, and now I'm telling them, 
you guys were crazy because as you were having fun, I was talking about serious issues. Now Sweet Mickey is trying to use his popularity to transform himself into Michel Martelly, the man of the people and presidential candidate. Today is his first rally, and although he has to take security precautions, he'll be getting there on foot. Many people, I guess, will be just going to podium with security and do their speech. We need to walk with the people. We need to be in the streets with the people. But the earthquake victims in the tents surrounding the Martelly rally are not impressed. The rally ends with a scrabble for Martelly t-shirts and it may be the free clothing which appeals more than the logo. Haiti's democratic experiment has brought few improvements to its people who are left with a deep distrust of their politicians, globally known as corrupt. The fact that over 10% of Haitians still live in emergency camps is seen as yet another sign that the government has little interest in its people. Are you going to try and vote or have you just lost faith in the government? The earthquake victims are aware of the billions of dollars of international aid promised after the disaster, and having seen little or none of it, it is the government they blame. But only a fraction of the aid has been paid out so far, and much of that has gone to foreign NGOs to spend, and not the government. The money has not really been paid out. A lot of it has gone around the Haitian government. However, I believe that with its own uh, resources, the government could have sent uh, a stronger messages, you know? Because politics is not only about, uh, if you want, the nitty gritty. It's also about the signals that you send. Rehousing over a million earthquake victims has therefore become one of the most urgent election issues. When President Preval released a decree of eminent domain allowing the government to force the sale of private land for public use, this gave birth to the tent city of Corail on the outskirts of Port-au-Prince. But since then, 20,000 families have set up home next door in an area they now call Canaan. Nous perdu tout à fait nous. 
nous pas gagner rien nous pas aucun côté pour aller autre que on seul côté nous décaler que suivre monde qui mourir et puis nous enterrer donc si c'est pas comme ça nous d'appel c'est là pour nous d'avenir et c'est seul et, et, et bien que le président préval les banon c'est décret que l'ité banon après 12 janvier le décret de zone d'utilité publique Yet the government says it has not decreed Canaan as public property and regards these settlers as squatters. Lack of proper communication means confusion reigns, but the people here feel they have staked their claim to the land. C'est nous qui mettons nos têtes ensemble, qui venons, qui avons avec des serpents, qui avons avec des rages, qui avons des rages, nous faisons ça venir sans vous, je ne veux dire. Alors que, pour le moment, ils ont des peur. However, Michel Martelly does come to Canaan, and as he and his wife Sophia find out, this is a tough electorate to persuade. So nous, c'est comme si c'est une bêtise à passer, nous. Pas pour mettre nous, c'est pas pour mettre nous, c'est pas pour nous, c'est pas pour nous, pour nous, pour nous, pour nous, mais c'est pour mettre nous. That means he didn't convince you to vote for him in this visit? No, not Yet, by the end of the rally, Jimmy does seem to have chosen his candidate. While Michel Martelly's appeal has now put him amongst the top contenders for the presidency, he and his wife say they're running a shoestring campaign and that even if they had the money, they wouldn't want to spend it. Most of the things you see here were donated. School started a week ago. People can't afford to buy books to go to school. And, you know, you're just like kind of showing off, I would say, your wealth. I think it's indecent toward those people, those victims who have been living in tents. If things weren't donated, I think it would have been a no visual campaign for us. It's not an eye campaign, it's a mind campaign. Fran Charlot knows what an electoral campaign can cost here. He runs one of Haiti's biggest advertising agencies. Usually, when they listen to, to my prices, they cry. Because to get a national network of billboard, it can go up to half a million dollars. Possibly, this half a million will, will be part of a budget of 18 to 20 million dollars. There is one candidate that is clearly outspending all of the competition. The face of Jude Celestin, President Preval's nominated successor, is everywhere. What do you make of the Celestin campaign? I think he is overdoing it. It's like you, everybody listen to the radio by putting the volume at four, and then somebody wants to make sure that everybody else is listening to it, they put it at 15. But if you turn your volume all the way to 30, then it becomes a cacophony, and then nobody else wants to listen to it anymore. Jude Celestin was director of the Government Center for National Equipment, whose improvements to Haiti's infrastructure have been the outgoing administration's most notable success. Who do you think is your biggest competition in this presidential race? People would tend to say, uh, probably Jude Celestin, but people would say that. I would say myself that he's the one with more money, he is the one who has the power with him, he has the system, he has the electoral council with him. So he will probably definitely get close. But I don't think anybody wants to deal with him for, for belonging to the, to the system. Yet these members of the small army wallpapering the streets with Celestin posters say they do see him as a fresh face. Parce que nous faisons ça pour changement. Premièrement, pas c'est le changement pour payer, changement pour petit nous aller pour tout. Parce que c'est ça que nous connaissons nous pour la donne. C'est pour ça nous là. C'est comme ça tout. Si les bagages là bon tout quitter nous et puis n'a pas marcher sur tout. Vous comprenez? N'a pas marcher, n'a pas prendre tout. Ça veut dire nous pas pouvoir bien pitié pour eux. Parce que n'a pas les dents sur tout. Not to the
Yet Jude Celestin's first rally in his hometown of Croix de Bouquet is a huge event which clearly gets Boom's blood racing. Well, si nous avons mis le ciel, nous avons mis le même. Et parce que nous ne pouvons pas manger, nous avons mis le ciel, nous avons mis le ciel. Meanwhile, scores of school buses ship in supporters. But amongst the locals, there are dissenters. None of the presidential candidates follow election commission rules, which require them to publish campaign funding and spending. So speculations about government corruption abound. How come Jude Celestin can draw so many supporters? Are you saying these people are paid to come here? How do you know that they're paid? Above all, what the Celestin rally demonstrates is an electoral machine that dwarfs those of the other candidates. Celestin himself has to fight his way through his supporters to get backstage. In the end, his speech is less about policy than a show of strength. And in a country where 70% of the population is under 30, Jude Celestin now has the support of its biggest youth movement, Jeanne Corégen, Youth Supports Youth. Other young men like Confiance Lima in the camp outside the National Palace feel very differently about the government candidate. Let me tell you the big story. Why right now, everyone in the ghetto, everybody have a gun right now. And the election day, they're going to make trouble. They're not going to let that happen. She says to be president in this country. They don't know the approval. Time will tell whether there will be election violence, but Confiance says that gangs have already infiltrated this camp and divided up the territory. Oh, we're filming on the other gang territory now? Yeah, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> Maybe we want to be careful. No, yeah, because the house is when they, they got kidnapped some people at night. Uh -huh. They put in the little house over there. Oh, they, they keep kidnapped victims in there? They kill them and put in the sack when they speak, you know. So we leave the little house. So but we have to leave. We can stay here. Though Confiance never says he's a gang leader, he claims to be in charge of a group which controls security in this area. And bizarrely, despite his earlier assertions, he also claims they are on the payroll of Jude Celestin's party, Inité. That's the committee with Inité. You see, Inité right here, he gives us honor to make us believe he's a good man, We're going to vote for him. How much would somebody from the camp committee get for supporting Jude Celestin? How much do you get when you go to a rally and you clap? Just an example, if you give us just like 200,000 good, for myself, I can give, I can just uh, keep 5,000 good. I can give the people 1,000 good or 500 good, you know, and make them, you know. Have any of the other candidates done that? You yeah, don't have money. Only people have money right now in this country, just to listen. Confiance invites us to film a meeting with other camp members who also claim they are getting money from Celestin's party. Vous allez voter qui pour président? Pour qui vous allez voter? Vous êtes Celestine. Celestin. Why do you think Celestin is a good candidate? <laughs> we Can don't say he's a good candidate. We have to eat. If they want only has money right now, we need some money, that's why. Not because we love him. Remember I told you that it's about money right now. And he's giving you money. He will. Give he us is. some money already, he will give us some money. Mm. The alienation from politics here is absolute, and Confiance swears that in the end, none of them will actually vote for Celestin. For weeks, we tried to get an interview with Celestin, but I offered his party chairman instead. 
He says Confiance's security cards must be a scam, since Inite does not issue any cards at all. He denies all other accusations too. Is it true that your party pays people to attend election rallies? Alors, on ne peut pas payer des gens pour participer à des rallies. Alors, sinon, on, il nous faudrait 500 millions hein, pour faire participer des gens à, à des rallies. Disons, c'est pas l'argent qui, en fait, euh, peut acheter euh, des votes ici en Haïti. C'est une question de conviction et d'idéologie politique. But many voters say they have yet to see the kind of vision from any of the presidential candidates that might really mean something to their lives. Vous supportez Christella? C'est votre candidat Christella? Non. Non? Non. C'est pas votre candidat. Non, on fait ça pour l'argent, on fait travailler. Vous travaillez seulement pour la campagne de Christella? Les votes, c'est les votes pour vous. Et est-ce que vous allez voter vous-même? Non. Non, vous vous votez pas? Non. Pourquoi pas? Everybody saying the same thing. Uh, well, we're going to send every uh, kid to school, we're going to get the people out of the tent. But it's easy to say. Where is the money going to come from? What laws are going to be voted? I've seen and I've heard nothing. And even though many of these candidates are my friend and my comrades, I haven't heard anything that would make me vote for them. The only person who does seem to galvanize much of Haiti's poor is the exiled former president, Jean-Bertrand Aristide. Is si Aristide a candidate encore? Do you vote for him? Yes, 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 whether Haitians were pro or anti Aristide, his presence certainly got voters to the polling stations. This year, a very low turnout is predicted, and it is made worse by the fact that many are facing long delays replacing electoral cards that were lost in the earthquake. <laughs> As if all this isn't enough, Haiti has just been hit by its first outbreak of cholera in a century. Around 1,000 people have been killed so far, and over 15,000 are infected. Recently, Confiance's camp outside the National Palace had its first casualties. The election period has so far been relatively peaceful. This might be due to the scale of popular disillusionment and apathy, but if the government doesn't manage to contain the cholera soon, this epidemic could end up pushing Haitians over the edge. Across the road, outside the National Palace, the faces of the presidential candidates stare through the railings at the camp beyond. The call from the people is for action now, from whoever gets elected. Anyone, anyone, anyone. I don't care, I don't care. White, green, black, Chinese, every day people need to eat, that's it. The suite, the suite is after, the building is after, the airplane is the after. Change, change. Help the people. Help the people. Since the completion of this film, rioting armed protesters have opened fire on UN Nepalese troops that they blame for being the source of the cholera outbreak in Haiti. As we go to air, one protester has been killed and almost 20 people wounded, including six peacekeepers. That's it for this edition of People in Power. If you'd like to comment on this program or have any other issues you'd like us to address, then do get in touch on aljazeera.net forward slash English. Until next time, bye-bye.